Hello. Should I hear anyone here? Hi. Am I here? No. Okay. Yeah, now I can hear I'm you. here. I can hear you. And you are there. Excellent. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hank. Hello. The punctuality of German trains. <laughs> yeah. You are in a yeah, train no, station. Yes. I am. With a very tall ceiling. It. Yeah, it's Frankfurt. So, <clears throat> here we go. Are you going to take a train home now? I'm, I'm done for today. So, just in and have a beer because this is a nightmare. Oh. Well, yeah, just mute your, your LTE is not as good as you think it is. Good. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry. So, to hear that. Uh, click this pre preview. Am I sharing? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so maybe give it one minute. I guess everyone found the new URLs that I uh, I discovered that the WebEx URL that was in the calendar invite was stale. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but anyway. I guess you all, at least all of you found the, the URL I updated with. So, um, uh, we ha I, I don't, so of the, the Romans editorial comments, um, Hank said that these last two were of concern to him uh, and he wanted to do something else with them. Um, and but I just wanted to know if uh, anyone had read through them for the moment, uh, or if not, we'll go through them one by one anyway. Um, I have not had a chance yet. I'm just hoping we could go through them on this call here. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go through them. So just before we do that, uh, let me just make that. A little bit I did just approve the, the the one that you have on the screen now. So yeah. So I wanted to just uh, find out if if we're all okay with this. There was some comments on the call uh, two weeks ago that um, not everyone liked this um, and that they wanted to remove the word active. I don't agree with that because I believe that active on path attacker is a term that we're going to, we're going to use more and more um, as opposed to passive on tap path attacker, which is someone who can see but not replace traffic and no one uh, I believe up to this point, no one is sure if a man in the middle can always replace uh, delete traffic or not. Um, uh, anyway, maybe I had a document do about that. In this so case, I don't do have a both? preference between red and green only because the rest of the sentence says uh, who may observe yes. change or misdirect. And so the rest of the sentence is obvious that it's, it's, it's active. So I can live with it either red or green. Right. An Why active one can change, say... a passive one can't change, right? And so the fact that it says, or change already implies it's active. It's active, yeah. Why don't we just say both? I don't know if I'm audible, actually, but why don't we just say active man in the middle? Well, in other words, don't accept the suggestion from last week, from last time. I would prefer that. I wrote it down because that's what the group, I think, Peters wanted to do. Oh, sorry. Um, um, uh, I, I prefer the term on path rather than man in the middle. Um, I was referring to uh, e your suggested change, Michael. But yes, I was yes, either, either yes. Of those, right. Yes. But I do prefer the term on path rather than man in the middle, which I thought was what Roman was saying. Yes, that was Roman's complaint. He didn't want to use that term anymore. The man um, in the middle. And, and I don't know if, if you know that I had proposed a couple, a year or so ago a document in SAG to essentially, you know, clearly define some of the uh, terms. Didn't go anywhere in SAG. No one was particularly enthusiastic about it, but um, uh, that doesn't mean, uh, anyway. Yeah, so okay, I, so, I had the opposite opinion where, where I had uh, actually prefer the man in the middle. Uh, it's years of uh, people understanding what that term is and to just, uh, do away with it in place of another one doesn't seem to really serve much purpose. So the the the, the counter argument is that the term actually has been vague over the years, and which is why we've had to uh, clarify uh, who may observe change or misdirect misdirect 
uh, because it wasn't always clear that they could do more than observe. Um, and um, uh, anyway, um, so of those who have reviewed them, did you review them with the with the term active it w was preferred or not? Ned, Hank. I think I approved what was there with the, the, the beyond path so, attacker is fine. So you're happy without the word active? Yeah. We lost Hank. I guess maybe he'll reconnect. So Dave, what do you say? Remove the word active or not? I, I'm saying the rest of the sentence makes it clear what we're talking about because the main point is uh, observe. Meaning, I agree. Exactly the same I agree. Meaning. But <laughs> just a second, you have exactly the same meaning if you deleted all of the words except for attacker, right? My, that's my point. Is to say what you put in front of attacker is kind of superfluous to me because whether you call it active or not, or on path or not, or man in the middle or not, uh, the main point is an attacker who may observe change or redirect evidence. In fact, I would also be fine if you were to delete all those words and just say attacker, right? Because again, the main point that I'm making is the meaning of the sentence doesn't change. That's why I really don't care. Am I audible now? I'm not sure. Yes. Yes, you are now. Ahead, Hank. Oh, Tell us, Hank, if you prefer the change with or without the word active. Active is fine. On path is fine. So I would uh, ignore the removal of active. And way, way agrees with you, Dave. Uh, I, I mean, if I had to flip a coin, if you're fine with it either way, then I, yeah. I'm going to just go with yeah. the, the, the term active on path attacker, because I think that that is a term that is uh, been encouraged as the uh, consensus uh, replacement for the word man in the middle. And there's quite a few people that don't understand what man in the middle means uh, who are, you know, less than our age um, there. I don't really care if I had to flip a coin, I'd land on uh, make Roman happy because he seems to have a preference. Okay. I'm going to do that. So, okay. so Roman was the one who initially didn't want to have the man in the middle because that's an outdated term. I just want to highlight, I don't know if this was mentioned, the man in the middle that's is correct. also well known. So, um, um, and, and in the end, Dave is I've, I've met the people that, fine. I've met well, people that are... don't know how to expand MIT, MITM. Okay. I mean, uh, okay. All, of these are, the all these are Roman's comments, right? So we're just yeah. trying to address these are all Roman's, Roman's comments. comments. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is. It, uh, sorry. It is, of course, Malcolm in the middle. I'm sorry. I forgot that. Yeah. So Malcolm in the middle. Yes, is the TV <laughs> show, and we've also had Mallory in the middle. Um, and uh, th there's been many other I interesting expansions that keep the the acronym well while yeah. changing the term. Massachusetts uh, to... Institute of Technology Media Lab. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. and they well, are known well. to be in the middle often of many controversies. Right. It's the home of uh, of um, of uh, Richard Stallman originally, right? So yeah. there you yeah. go, right? Many controversies. And those okay, two statements, those two statements go well together. Yes. Uh, all right. So uh, I'm just going to walk through these. I don't know if there's any good order. Uh, so oh yeah. So this was. Let me pull up the um, text. Um, So this refers to the this section, um, integrity protection. Where did it go? 12.2. Uh, here we go. Twelve point two. So this refers to the title of this section. We had a conversation last time about this, um, and uh, we had a couple of suggestions: system integrity, message authenticity. Um, comments that nobody's going to worry about the section title itself. Um, Peter talked about the integrity of the integrity system. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, so I basically the there was that, um, that if we were going to include that 
uh, to address his, his suggestion directly that we were going to have to, or we really should include the integrity of lots of other things, including the integrity system and things that go into protecting the integrity system. Uh, and I didn't want to open that kind of worm, so I was really a proponent to not um, opening it and keeping it more or less the way we had it. So I think that part of the, the I think you're absolutely right, Peter, and I think that also part of the uh, side of this is that the this section expanded to include some things, and that's why the title no longer feels cr exactly correct. And Hank, what's your opinion here? Can you read any of this um, on your yes. small screen? Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> I'm very prepared. So um, actually, um, I, I feel, Peter, because verifiers should be trustworthy. And why don't they do reds? Because it's another th layer of reds. So it would be red layers all the way down, <laughs> basically. So where do you terminate? So yeah, you would use the same mechanism again uh, and again and again. So that doesn't really work. So uh, I wouldn't open the can of worms. And I would agree with Peter, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I would have loved to have opened that can of worms earlier on in the process to discuss these issues about how you, how roots of trust really come into to breaking that chain that you mentioned. Um, uh, and I think in the long term, in terms of trusting these kind of mechanisms, we're going to have to address them. But I, I think it's yeah, way too late in this that, process to do it now. Well, there is this one one opportunity we could take on because Kathleen, uh, and that is a, like a miracle to me, at some point said we should define root of trust, which came as such a surprise to me that I read the sentence twice. And so, um, um, yeah, so that would address that problem. I'm also aware yeah. that another document does define root of trust now in RATS. I, it eluded me which one it was, but I think it was Hannes's new one. I, I forgot. But some new document actually defines root of trust now. So are we happy with that, first of all? If not, uh, should we fix it here and listen to Kathleen? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I would love to not end, open any cans, but take into account Kathleen's uh, comment and the fact that it's now defined somewhere else here in this working group uh, makes me a little bit uneasy, to be honest. I think this is on a tangential topic. That's a good question, but I think it's unrelated to what we're talking about. So I would appreciate sticking in the queue of stuff to talk about today. I do have okay, maybe sorry. Yeah. I don't want to lose uh, on this one. So. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, maybe maybe it's too off topic. I'm not sure. So let's not open the can. No, but, right, but don't forget it. If you want to file an issue, file an issue. But or at least put it on the agenda for the call once we get through these. But uh, Kathleen will never file an issue. Uh, we have to okay. do it for her. So for but uh, she, she filed the issue on the list, so to speak. Yeah. So I'm trying to get back to the question at hand. Um, uh, I agree that we should change the title from integrity protection to something else. Um, I see the suggestions from 14 days ago, system integrity or me message authenticity, um, where I can get where you're going with both of those. Um, I also suggested in the chat, maybe message protection. Um, and, and out of those three, my preference is in order, message protection, then system integrity then message authenticity and then integrity protection in that order uh, preference. So I was going to suggest conceptual message protection. That'd be fine too. That's just adding a word to the, to my top preference. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. And the protection uh, plus part on the hang. Sorry, plus on the net. Okay. And, and the, the, uh, the protection part would be a good symmetry to, uh, unprotected. Uh, things like UCCS, uh, and so I protect it should be in it. Yes, I think that's that's a good choice. Is this readable to you guys? Uh, no, because it says authenticity. Oh, it's, it's unshared. Protection. It needs to say protection, not authenticity. It was readable enough for oh, you no, to be able readable. to see that. <laughs> that was a question. Yes, was, was could you read it? Not could. What did you agree with it? I, I, I think that's true. The answer was yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to say. So that's what you would like conceptual message protection. And yes. then I've changed it. I've changed it to message protection here, but I'm not sure if you want the word conceptual repeated here. Um, I, no, I actually liked integrity there. Which was the original word before any changes. Okay. Because all it, we're saying under message protection, it's a lot of subcategories of things. There's integrity protection. There's replay attack protection. There's you know encryption, which is basically confidentiality protection. There's dot and so on. All these are different properties of 
of the conceptual message protection. It does then talk a little bit about some system stuff too, where it talks about uh, the, the strength of the root of trust and so on. But I think it's fine for all that to be under the subcategory of conceptual message protection, just elaboration on the bullets above. So that's why I think, okay. I think it's, it's fine as you show it on the screen right now. Uh, maybe Do you think this section should be in a new section? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, or a subsection I, of this? I, I, I would not object to that, but you're asking me whether I think it needs to be, and the answer is no, minimal changes, unless somebody has a good reason. I'm fine to be this in this section, I think. Am I audible? I'd never know. Yeah, yes, yes. you are. Okay, uh, just one quick question. End-to-end -end encryption, is that a secure channel or something else? Um, it could, could yeah, be exactly. message level, could um, be data level. It means it, it doesn't matter, right? Because this is conceptual message, right? This is not the actual protocol. So I, I don't think it needs elaborating on um, Michael. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would now because we are so detailed there, uh, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to elaborate because there's probably at least three things would be in there, and then it gets harder to read. So. Okay. I think oh, in, all I've done this is point, why I strongly agree with it, with Ned's point of adding the word conception there to make that be clear. So, so after all that, all we did is change the title. That was what the that was what the comment was originally. Right. I just I'm just clarifying that after a couple of words inserts and deletes and whatever, we're we're uh, we we've just changed the title. I mean, so, my my philosophy is the only person that have commented on this at least that we're going through is Roman. And we should try to scoop it as narrowly to what Roman said as possible, because all the rest is past working group last call, right? So minimal yep. changes, except for when somebody points out an actual problem. I don't want to look for problems to, to, to fix. So fair enough. I'm just explaining that's why my philosophy is don't change other stuff. But if if you have a strong opinion or somebody else does, then great, let's address it. But I don't. So yeah, I want to second that point of view, right? Because the changes that you make are just going to add to more comments. Okay, so uh, that's what we have here. Yeah, in uh, some other concern, like uh, Hank, Hank and I are in like the uh, confidential competing consortium and stuff. And so there's the mantra minimum viable governance. We'll hear minimum viable changes, right? So, <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, we've changed the title. I'm going to commit this one. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave the editorial comments for the last because uh, I think that there's more substantial stuff to go into here. Uh, so there was some related comment to the fact that this the section was too small. Uh, this is about security considerations in general. So I think we were intentionally silent about endorsements, endorsers, endorsements, since we had long conversation reference values, long conversation about how they weren't in scope. Uh, yeah, I exactly thought that was for the architecture. Roman, who was one of the people that was arguing that uh, uh, what one of Hank's documents or whatever needed a charter change or whatever. So it's interesting he's asking about these things that we said was out of scope for keeping the charter. So. So, I mean, that's that to me is a reasonable answer to this to say, well, actually, <laughs> according to you, it was out of scope. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, it will be in scope in June, sir, at June third. So maybe he's preempting this. I don't know. Uh, you know, um, hold oh. for a document update then. Hold for no, 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 no. <laughs> so this is this is fine. Um, so uh, I, I would I would be okay with this. I would just, but we have to establish. Uh, these editors of group consents and then put that to the list and say, no, are we doing this is necessary. Yeah. Is that all fine? It, so it, Peter, Peter had some comments about other things we could reference. 
and he was oh. going to dig them up um, there. Good. Um, yeah. Well, the thing um, that I can think of is uh, it, you could say that um, that the following items are things that are left to be covered in security considerations of any particular solution. Are what it was? Do you say? Are I, I love, love, love looking at you. Would you kill your video for me? So my my I can't kill video from my side like it's in Teams. Um. You can't. This oh, Dave, would you turn your video off? That's what you want. Okay. Yeah. Hank, yeah, yeah. So, so, sorry, up. Dave. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I will do. So, uh, Dave, you said the following things are, and then I missed a word. Well, I was going to say, if we think we need to do something here, one possibility, and again, I'm not arguing yes. for this, um, yep. is yep. you could list a couple of things that Roman a asked and say that that's the responsibility of a solution document to to cover those topics. So Section 8 does cover those topics. And given the change we made to security considerations to, to call out and recognize conceptual messages in terms of protection requirements, that seems to cover those other messages as well. Um, so Section 8 went through this these endorsements yeah, so it, it isn't as if they're ignored. So just not in the in scope for. Um, yeah, it's just they saying the security considerations are not describing endorsements and reference values, but in fact it is. Section twelve point two does describe them. So. Uh, all right. So first of all, let me ask: Do you do, uh, before we start worrying about text changes that I'm trying to capture a little bit? Do you think we? Does anyone think we should make some change here? Or I we should simply respond and say this is was out of scope. So we go through the. The list of bullet items in the in the feedback. First two bullet items are addressed. Third one it says, "What's the implication of combining roles into a single entity?" I think so. I, I just reread this one like like the third time here. Roman's comments here. Um, I wonder if all if his main point is that there's a bunch of bullets in twelve point two. Uh, but it sounds like it wasn't clear to him, or at least one way of reading this is it wasn't clear to him which of those bullets refer to which of the lines in the conceptual architecture. Um, one answer would be all of them reply to all of them. Okay. Uh, if it's anything other than that, then maybe he wants more elaboration. But uh, uh, if we if we just respond in an email, the only answer that I can think of was that um, all the bullets apply to all the lines in the diagrams. Okay. All right, because they're just a list of things to think about, right? I mean, meaning a bunch of properties you need to figure out how to solve. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're all things that play into whether or not you as a relying party should trust the um, integrity of the system. This is really relates to the idea of what other stuff should be included in evidence. And I, I, I'm going to remake the comment I made before. If you start talking about this, it gets complicated, and uh, there's lots of room for people to say, well, what about this situation? What about that situation? And it's just not going to get done, right? You know, whatever we write will be insufficient. And so I, I'm not an advocate for addressing this here. Other Even than though, an email. Right? In long, email. Yeah, yeah. In the long run, I believe that as these mechanisms emerge and become more relied upon, we'll have to revisit trustability and what needs to be included in evidence for attestations and what are the mechanisms right. that we need to do that. But um, we're a long way from being able to um, argue that we need that complexity um, when we're still trying to say you just need this mechanism. There's an evolution here that you're saying and that I think that you're also saying that that the the complexity of the solution may also depend upon the 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 yeah. 
Yeah, the risk, I, I think the, 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 is, the risk of the of the for the device, right? Yeah. So, so not only is the solution mm -hmm. complex, explanation of the problem and convincing people that it's worth the complexity is a is a, a tough thing to write about. And right. so um, I think that if we were to engage in that, we would have to do a lot more writing, get a lot more reviews, um, and r really open ourselves up to, wow, this whole mechanism is just not worth it. Forget it. Right. right. And so uh, I, I don't have we, a we're, we're trying to We're trying to walk before we run here and, and get some, you know, kind of uh, um, um, some, some level of right. – a more minimal acceptance that we have to do this kind of thing before we get into the, well, it's even right. more complicated. Yeah. I, I'm of the opinion that if we were as a you know global community to have widespread adoption of app testation mechanisms as we've described them, we've done a pretty good thing. Um, but there are still a lot of holes that we have to do. There's a lot of people that will be making trust decisions based on this information that will not be sound. Um, and I think that when we have the mechanism, we can start looking at ways to address that, to point out the flaws and, and, and mechanisms to do it, that m we might be more amenable to the complexity needed to solve those issues. I totally agree with you, Peter. So what I'm hearing is that we should reply with an email, um, and uh, but I don't really know, I don't actually know specifically what to deal with this question here. Maybe we want to split that into a separate issue. So, I mean, the answer to this question is, is certainly yes. Yeah. Right. And so, um, but that's not going to stop implementations of from from combining these things into um, single entities. So, what are the the implications on the ability to trust if you do? And and that's the discussion that needs to be had if you want to go go down this hole. All right, and and so then then the question is, how do you believe what you've done to address the trust issues? And, and again, that opens up another can of worms. So there, there's a there's a lot of subtleties hiding in the the correct answer to his question. And, and again, I, my recommendation is let's not go there. Okay, I agree with everything that you were because you're saying. So I'm going to label this as won't fix, and going to we're going to reply to the list on this okay so uh let's just talk about this one then so i think he's jumped on the fact that we had a reference to 5280 and uh, we weren't really trying to uh, uh, be prescriptive here. And so actually one proposal is to remove this reference completely. Um, Um, I wonder if there's a way to just change it to make it be more of an example than just removing it. Yeah, that's hmm. section six of blah, blah, blah is an example of such a validation. That work for you, David? Yep. Uh... That would work. You could also phrase it as, you know, for example, see section six of section six for uh, details. Or sorry, for yeah, I don't know. I like your wording. Stick with what you said. So, for an example, for an example of such a procedure, does that work yeah. for you? Yeah, yeah. For an example, yeah, and then you can delete the four details in the end. I like that. For an example of such a procedure, see section six of blah. Okay, I'll write it the other way around. For an example of such a procedure, see section 
Yep, and then delete the four details off the end. Yeah, uh, for the end, yeah. Give me a second if you want to read the other issues. Uh... So that's what we have. Correct number of E's in procedure. Yes, I think so. Any comments about this text? It's good. All right, so freshness. So I feel like we had this conversation three times already. Um, uh, two comments about this on the list, one from Thomas and one from Eric. On this topic? Or, yes. or on of the, the email? Topic of, or on of the, the, of, of the yeah. topic of the list, not here, and it is, but on this topic, yes. On this topic, on the mailing list, you're saying? Yes. You summarize what I said. Uh, it's Indeed. fine. <laughs> that, yeah. that, so uh, it, it, yeah, basically, in, in summary, uh, Eric was, I uh, think, commenting on the uh, um, index uh, detail, and uh, um, Thomas was commenting on the um, section uh, ten three detail. Uh, in, in, at least on I this think. one, I like Roman's point. If the working group feels like it needs it, I won't push back. Right. Thank you for not pushing back. We will accept. We will keep this one as is. Okay, so that's what we're we'll going to do. More, we're going to write. Thank you for twelve stuff. But uh, at least he said, because um, I think here he's saying, well, you went to this level of detail for this one. What about all those other issues I called out on, on section twelve, right? And so I think his main point is, you go into the level of detail here, uh, but not over there, and either remove this or edit there, right? And we're saying, well. Uh, we don't want to do the other stuff, and the working group feels like this is useful. So, yeah, I mean, he's saying that it's not needed, but does it hurt? All right, and I think the answer is no, and it's already written, so it, it's informative. It, it's already gotten working group consensus. Um, so, Eric and Thomas said, I'm just going to paste. But, but all, all, uh, they are, they, both of them commented on different portions, I think. I can't tell by the top of my head, sorry. So that was Thomas on section 10. Uh, and this are you cross-referencing this with the list right now? Yeah, I'm cross-referencing okay, cool. it into the list. Okay, so it's won't fix. We're going to reply back. Thank you for not pushing back. And as you see, and I'll say that, you know, uh, the working group has, it was, it's wanted this there. Okay, so let's talk about topological patterns. Figures five and six are not consistent with the roles defined in section four. Um, so there's section four, all our roles and five. artifacts. And there's sec figure five and figure six. So those are our, our models. Okay, so we'll bring out figure five for a second. And so here, um, all right, so I think what he's talking about is the fact that the uh, vertical attestation result line terminates at a tester. A different way of drawing that is a line that goes 
through a tester and then out the right side, right? Where, where uh, it, it, the, the main point that the section is trying to make is the attester here is it just treats it as an opaque, right? And here he, he's interpreting it as it actually consumes the attestation results and generates new attestation results, which is not the intent. Would it be helpful if we wrote, we drew the line through the attester? That's exactly what I'm wondering. Uh, and I, I think the same thing he's going to say is on section uh, in figure six, the same thing is true for the evidence line. Which okay. goes through the relying party and then up to verifier. Call this a pass or model. So uh, I'll just switch the sharing here again. So uh, if you were to draw the line through there, does that kind of imply that the verifier is always involved and kind of breaks the passport model where the attester has the passport uh, and can use it? The attester has the passport. Oh, you, in other words, it's, 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 um, but the value of the passport model is that you have a passport and you can use it when you need it. Yep. And if it's still good, you can use it again. Uh -huh. And uh, the verifier is only involved in the, really the obtaining of the passport, right? If I, I have that right. Point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and yes. so if you were the to point connect is the caching. it directly. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. the... Okay. Uh, uh, so, yeah, Peter's making me think that maybe the line isn't the right thing, it requires a sentence. Um, do you have a preference, Peter? I don't think the line should go there, and if you feel that we need a sentence, then let's do it. Okay. All right, so Peter's convinced me, because the, the, the main point is that vertical line and horizontal line can be at very different times with a significant, you know, caching delay in between, subject of the uh, freshness guarantees the attestation results, right? But uh, yeah, have... I think you might want to say that it can even be reused. Yeah, yeah, I think that's an important concept uh, for the passport model and really one of the main attractiveness right. of it. So there's some high time kind of life to a passport, and as long as it's still good, you can use it. Right. You can present it to multiple relying parties. You can present it to uh, the same relying party multiple times, just like a physical passport. <laughs> so so the verifier then gives an attestation result, which the attester treats as an opaque value. Here yeah, it says, it text, but may yeah. cache it. It says, yeah. but might cache it. it. Says it already. Yep, you're right. Okay, it should be fine as is. Uh, what I was thinking of saying, it's already clear. You're pointing it out. So yeah, I don't, I don't see any change that's needed. Um, maybe uh, what we should do, um, is start a new paragraph here. Hmm. So in this model, uh, sorry, let me go back to the yeah. the, 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 the paragraph here on the screen. I thought it was already pretty clear. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, so what I'm saying is so going back to this version here, um, right here. What if we started a new paragraph right here? I don't go. Don't, don't care either way. That would be okay. Don't well, I, I'm it. just thinking it would bring out the fact that it does not consume the result, but might cache it, and that's I think the 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 key point that we've yeah uh, I, trying to get across. I would just take that sentence and reply an email saying it should that's, be clear that's from the sentence the right here. It's showing us two different lines because uh, it's consistent because it doesn't consume it, and it shows us two lines because it might cache it. All right. I don't know. What do you think, Peter? Um, again, I, I think words have meaning, and I read the words there, and it says what we meant. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it doesn't really need to be changed. That being said, uh, I find oftentimes re readers don't see the meanings of words, and you know maybe breaking this paragraph would help that. I don't know.
things yeah, I, and I think about, that I've written many times I get comments like this that wait a minute, it really is there. You just skipped over it. And you so skipped over it. That's why I'm thinking that starting a new paragraph would let, let, at at the very least would give us a paragraph anchor to point <laughs> at him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't have a problem with you break the paragraph you want there. It, it, it's largely a I don't care, right? It's there. It says what we meant. Yeah, if you want to insert a paragraph break there, that's fine because that doesn't change any words. And so that doesn't really change any working consensus. And nobody's going to comment on the addition of the paragraph break. So when when we say it may be reused, is it clear that it may be reused with different relying parties? I'd have to look back at the text. That's a good question. What you really is saying here, I think, is that the arrows don't go through the boxes, but terminate at the boxes. And that's what he's complaining about when he looks at the diagram. He sees it being consumed. Yes. And he didn't read the text properly to yes. see that so, that it's cached rather than consumed. Um, and, you know, so that's why making the arrow go through might be a little bit more cluing in. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that's basically I agree with the suggestion that we... I, I agree that if we don't actually specifically say that um, that it can be re reused in, in other attestations, even to a different relying party, um, then we should. That that's a that's a worthwhile change. Yep. I was just rereading to see if that said in any place, and it does not. And so uh, plus one to Peter's plus. wording. Yeah, but what should I do? Hank, we can hear you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, we have to. Uh, there's some really, really uh, stones here. I have to fix this. Okay, so here the tester does not consume it, but might cache it. Do you want to say the next? It can say, it can then present the uh, to relying party. Okay, the tester. Oh, can... Peter, good wording. You want to repeat what you said, Peter? See if. I, I said that you know, it, it, you know, the attester may use that the uh, the evidence uh, in other attestations, even to a different relying party. You said evidence, not attestation results. Uh, well, all right, you, uh, if you want to keep the word consistent, attestation results. Yeah, because I I, I I kind of think it's generally evidence. But if you want to be more specific, okay, that's great. May also use the attestation results. Uh, also may, also may. Uh, may also I mean, present. You can just even call it a passport, right? Did you, you just link the idea? We're, we're calling it a passport, right? So attestation results equals passport. I mean, do we actually say that? That you know, that's why we call it the passport the model. Let, you get that in. I mean, let me let me let me uh, write that down and then uh, let me. Um, we can edit it. Just a second note. Technically, we we called it attestation results, and the diagram says attestation result. Yeah. So, but it's in a section called the passport model. Uh, I'm going to toss this out for an idea, saying that you can basically say the verifier's attestation results are, are in the form of a, a passport, which then is stored at the attester for use in any attestation that it wants. Okay, so this is what I did here. All right. Um, first of all, well, this is a uh, irrelevant because I just unwrapped the paragraph. So ignore that. I'm sorry about that. Um, but the important part is that I started a new paragraph here. Uh, the tester can then present the attestation results, possibly and possibly additional claims to relying party, which then compared that's old text. The tester may also present the attestation results, the passport to another relying party. So maybe the word passport needs to be introduced further up. 
Yeah, if you're going to just uh, like, basically the ver you want to say the verifier is going to produce application results, which will be used as a passport, like a passport, not as a passport. Uh, I don't think you need to say the passport here because I think the uh, analogy is up above, um, and here result should indeed be singular without the s on the end. So we need we need we we gave it the name of. And, and here it should, I think would, when I said wordsmithing, it may read better if you say to other relying parties. And just to make it clear that it's, you know, one to many. Um, so we use the term reference values. I, I, I like to go back to what I said, which is other attestations and then accent the fact that it might be other relying parties. Okay, so may may also use the same attestation result in other attestations to something like that. Uh, That's what you mean. Uh, well, now I can't say use. May also use with in attestation. Uh, maybe you should be present. When attesting to? When That's what I had before. Relevant. Yeah, may also. Is that the same as it? when attesting to other relying parties? Well, I, uh, I, sorry, maybe we're not, maybe uh, uh, thanks for making me think we're trying to not use a test to as a verb, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, two. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We should be consistent on the use of S. Uh, it actually is consistent on um, not using S except for where you actually mean it in a way that could be plural. All the rest of the document uh, uses it without the S when specifically meaning singular. Um, evidence is odd because evidence, you know, is is both, both singular and plural, right? Yeah. Uh, but attestation result you can use the S to be current plural. So. Like if you look at 5.2, it's it's very consistent as using attestation result singular when talking about a, a single message. Okay. okay, before we, if we're happy with this, great. But then I'd like to go back to this issue because there's a second part of this issue. And so this is the figure six, which is the yeah. background same check. Way. Yep, same okay. thing. So, uh, so let's go to background check. And now this is the case, the evidence. Does the evidence get cached? I think not. I think the arrow should connect here. I think you're probably right. Peter, you agree? I'm, I'm thinking on that. Uh, <laughs> you thought of a good, a good counter that. example of the last <laughs> Jesus. Uh, maybe really. I'm leaning toward that it, it should go through. There's nothing that is going to be cached. I mean, and I'm not, the reason I'm thinking on it is, is it okay? Would you ever have the relying party ever just need to go to the verifier just to recheck in evidence that you think is is not stale yet? So um, I suppose it's possible, but I, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, rare, I just don't really see possible. what why. Yeah, it's not in the previous case, we said that the main reasons were things like, you know, one to many that you could have many different relying parties you could present the same passport to. I don't think that really applies here. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so I, I guess, I guess in, the, in the background check, but yeah, I don't think so. If an, if an attester has presented evidence of some sort to relying party and I've saved it, um, there's a, a question of the freshness of the policy that's used to check it. So the verifier may have looked at it and said, yeah, you're fine. Mm -hmm. And now the verifier might have new information and uh, then it would need to be checked again. So so I guess maybe it's not unreasonable that a relying party would represent evidence to a verifier uh, without going back to the attester to say, represent your evidence to me. I, I think that's so, right. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. That Having a cache, so let's say you have a long-lived channel between the attester and the relying party um but you know 
five seconds after it gets established, then it goes down because you know some network glitch happened for three seconds. It then comes back up. Yeah. Do you have to re go through the attestation stuff, or can you bring up your your channel with a new say TCP session without having to re go through that? As long as you have some cryptographic knowledge that it really is the same attester, the evidence is still good. Yeah. You use the cache. So yeah, yeah I, so, I, I think uh, that's right. So you, so you might express this in terms of there's this two separate policy decisions that the relying party is making. Is the evidence that the a tester gave to me fresh enough to use, right? Do I do I trust it? And then then there's a um, a second question that it needs to say, uh, do I check? Uh, do I trust the, the verification results that have been made in the actual background check? Uh, and then if if I trust the evidence, but I don't trust that, I'm going to then just send it off again. If I trust both, I'm going to re just reuse it. Right, and then sometimes I don't trust it. I have to go back and get new evidence, and then have it verified because it's new evidence. So, so I think there's there's a, a rational reason to have all of them. You know, where, even where the relying party doesn't have to go to either one of them to assert that uh, the attestation is 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 okay, because I trust the evidence is fresh. I trust the results from the verifier is fresh. Let me just respond to whoever, uh, for whatever condition I'm having that the attestation are, passes. Are so, you saying that that the relying party would, in some cases, cache the evidence rather than relying the on the verifier, rather than relying yeah. on the verifier to 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 uh, validate the evidence as fresh? The relying party would do that. Uh, sure, why not? Right, because, because it uh, implies that the relying party knows something about the freshness of the evidence that. It, the whole point and, of the verifier the is fresh, to do it, that. It's, it's, it's two things. It knows about the freshness of the evidence um, from the attester, as well as the freshness of the result from the verifier. So it doesn't really need to bother either one of them to answer the question, whatever the relying party was doing. If either one of them is not fresh, it needs to go to them. Uh, and if but, it, but if, if the it, attestation, if, 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 I totally agree with you. The attestation results has to be fresh, and the relying party has to has to know that. But but you're implying it would also know something about the freshness of the evidence that ran into the attestation results, and that's right. what I'm disputing. I, that disputing. So I, I'm I'm a big believer in the idea for you know, this is a security architecture idea that every entity has its own policy decisions that it acts upon, mm -hmm. and so it's it should never blindly take the results from the verifier. So again, this is a a question of trust. Do you trust? Um, that the evidence that you have from the attester is fresh? If the answer is yes, um, you now have to ask the second question, do you trust the result from the verifier? And and you could certainly have a policy that says, always go to the verifier and see what it says right now, because it's the, the complete arbitrator. But if I basically say, well, hey, I just checked uh, you know, a couple seconds ago, I don't need to check again, then whatever I was gonna do an attestation for, I can just assume that I would get the same answer and reuse it. And so, uh, I think this is still an area of active um, research to, to, to mm -hmm. say under what conditions can I can I trust? When does it make sense to to, to uh, do that? So how should I write that policy? Um, so I think in some cases the attester to relying party, you know, maybe they can only the relying party only can can only can use the uh, results for that connection let's say the tcp connection from the attester relying party is making a request and is provide and and if that connection goes down that or is re-established or is mo is is, is um, mobility brings it to a different ip address or something like this that it might say the relying party says oh yeah yeah no i have to start over again with with uh and I might yeah, need you fresh can understand evidence. conditions where you might start to yeah. start over, and you might not have to start over, or you might have to only partially go back to the appraiser. You might have some some notion that the um, so, so the ver verifier um, might have some sort of uh, notification mechanism to say that hey, my means of verification of evidence has changed. Um, this this would be you know a general access control idea. There's some policy in effect. Any kind of uh, policy decision that's been migrated into mechanisms needs to be revalidated uh, when the, uh, the policy decision engine itself has changed. And so um, there, the, you may have to go back and invalidate caches and do whatever. So from a mechanism point of view, all those things need to be built in um, if you're going you're gonna to do this right. 
Okay, so, so the, I don't think I disagree with you. I'm just not sure whether this implies any te any changes to the text. So, so go ahead, Ned. So the the other inputs to the verifier could cause the attestation results to change, even if the evidence doesn't change. Agreed. A and the relying party could select different verifiers using the same evidence. True. And but but the reality is the attestation result is some policy as to when he throws it away and tries again with either a new verifier or you know the the thing. So the the, ver the verifier I, I, I think there's a stamp, the verifier could say this is good for a day, right? But the, I only get evidence every week, so you know I'm going to use the same evidence yeah. every day for a week. So in that sense, the relying party would cache the evidence. Yeah. Okay, so right. we've said exactly the opposite up to this point. So, um, um, so, so first of all, I did put in this arrow. You may not like the exact nature of the arrow, but uh, I did put that in just before a moment ago we were talking. So we can discuss whether that belongs or not, okay, and where. Um, I, I started a new paragraph here, which was started here, okay, um, but... It's it says it's merely forwarded, so that says that it's not cached or anything else. So if you'd like it to say that it's cached, then I think we have to make some changes here to the text. Yeah. I think uh, we should not make changes to the text. I think what you have on the screen is perfectly fine, and we should just commit it as is um, and not make changes. So, so I, 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 I can kind of agree to that because I think to really drive home the kinds of things I've been saying, requires the introduction of a lot of descriptive text that is subtleties in it that uh, should go in. There, there are implementation details that will go for the quality of each of these entities. Agreed. Things that don't take these into consideration will be uh, not as good. And, and I, I, I kind of believe that when you're re relying on things that a relying party does, that there needs to be an evaluation of the mechanisms involved. You know, it's not yeah. just the evidence. You're, you're basically talking about about uh, about the you know uh, appraisal policy, the quality of the appraisal policy here, and I think that's what you're saying is that that there's some there's some deep details that the appraisal policy has to put in, and we're not in a position in this document right. to comment on. I think there's a, there's a lot of implementation details that will go to affecting trust, um, and then there's a lot of. Um, issues of what you request for evidence about different mechanisms that will affect trust. And the policy that you are going to have at a relying party to say whether or not the attestation was successful, right? That's a very vague kind of notion. Um, but it's all in the, the beholding of the, uh, the relying party itself. One relying party might look at the same mechanism and say, hey, it's, this is a failure. And somebody else might say, hey, this is okay. It was good enough for me. Right, and I don't know that that's something that comes out in general. That you know that that the, there isn't a absolute answer to an attestation being successful. Yeah. So, so right. Dave, so I think you I, were happy with the text. I want to just go on to this last paragraph. Ned, go ahead. So there's a, we we basically have uh, you know a stick figure diagram, and we're or arguing over what does a line mean? Yeah. And we're, you know, there's there's always going to be layers of complexity and and so forth that you can add to a line. So yeah. The question is, what is it that we that we think the architecture is? The, what's the what's the most important concept that, that the architecture at this level should you know preserve for what we what the line means? What's the most important? Yeah, yeah. Um, to know. me, it's that the verifier is involved and it's essentially doing the background check. Again, it's to the model. And my recommendation was would be not connect the line because it having the line might lead you to preclude the idea that that caching was happening and that you were going to the verifier each and every time, which might not be true. And and I was thinking at a, <clears throat> approaching it from the perspective of capturing the higher level idea or concept that the the message is from, from the from the perspective of the of who produces and who consumes which conceptual messages we're trying to say that 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 doesn't change even though we have these um uh, different uh, topology models 
In other words, the attester producing evidence that is consumed by the verifier is still true, even though it passes through the relying party. We're not saying that the relying party is the entity that asserts evidence. Correct. Always the attester. So if, the, if, the, if we, by adding the line, we can make it easy for the reader to see that that is preserved, that would be the most important message to, con, to the most important concept to convey at this the, level. The, yeah. the evidence well, is think integral. The way, you, the way that you have it right now, I think is good enough. I agree with Ned's point and that uh, so I, I think we should just merge this one and if we need to continue discussion, we can, but I don't see any problems with what you have on the screen right now, Mike. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think what you really want, but I don't think there's really room for it, is a box inside the relying out party that shows the evidence landing there and then the arrow coming into it and then leaving from it. Yeah, I don't think there's room, and I, I suspect that it wouldn't change anything in Roman's reading, right? If he didn't read the text, then he's going to have the same kind of question. So, so I'm going to respond to him and say, you didn't quite read the text, but we fixed it a little bit so that you could see better where the text you know, already said this, yeah. um, and I'm not sure I even understand this last paragraph here. The discussion of the fall of the purpose only. Um, it's just saying it's conceptual and a particular solution needs to bind it. So, point is that if someone comes up with a third a third scenario, it's not background check or passport model, and it makes sense, then don't try to constrain it into the passport model or or there. We're saying that this is an open ended thing that's what i think um right and, and that's that's the right perspective there there are right. many many ways to take these different entities and roll them together and we could name them or, or not name them and, and you know it really goes to some of it is the uh um the question of are there entities that do more than one uh, of the functions or take on more than one of the roles and, and you start to get uh different shapes that's the that's the word that we've adopted is that you have shapes of attestation uh, and that uh, there are, there is opportunity to like use an, different shapes in different situations. Sounds like an off-Broadway play, the shapes of attestation. So in <laughs> section 10.4, we use the word hybrid. So, uh, so I'm just going to stop us here. I've reopened this issue. I think we should come back to it next week. Uh, we have a couple more issues to deal with. Um, and so... Uh, so I, I, before you do, I just want to say one more thing. Um, we uh, published a paper in the April well, ACM journals last uh, fall that really kind of pushes on this issue of combining things and different things and having shapes of attestations and how you deal with them. Well, we should cite it maybe then. So I, I, I will send that to you. Okay, wonderful. All right, I'll talk to you guys next week. Fair enough? Yep. Okay. Great. Uh, is, isn't next week? Uh, oh, never mind. It's, it's Tuesday. It's like Tuesday. Memorial Day. Yeah, you have Memorial <laughs> Day, but I had yesterday yeah. off. We have a we have half the city out of power. We had a major a major uh, thunderstorm on Saturday afternoon that literally took out half the city's power. And it's still still not fixed. So schools canceled today even. So anyway, have a good day. Bye, Ray. Bye. Bye.